Today I'm going to read you a poem by a remarkable poet, Nikolai Gumilyov. The poem is called The Tram That Lost Its Way. And in many ways, this poem is prescient of not only what happened during and after the revolution, but what happened to humankind in the 20th century. At least that's the way Russians look upon it. Gumilyov married Anna Akhmatova, another great poet, in 1910. They had a son named Lev, and he wrote this poem at the end of December 1919. In 1921, he was arrested by the Bolsheviks and shot. This is The Tram That Lost Its Way by Nikolai Gumilyov. I was walking on a strange and unfamiliar street when a crow cawed out of the blue. I heard the strains of a lute and distant thunder. A tram flew by right under my nose. It's a mystery to me how I managed to hop onto its running board. The tram even left behind a trail of fire in the air of that sunlit day. It tore through the air, a dark winged storm, losing its way in the chasm of time. Stop this tram, conductor, stop it this very instant. Not in time. We'd gone around a wall and were speeding through a thicket of pine. We roared over three bridges, across the Neva, across the Nile, the Seine. A poor old beggar tossed us a curious glance as we flashed beneath a window frame, naturally the very same man who died a year ago in Beirut. Where am I? My heart, alarmed, beat out a faint answer. Can you see that station where they sell tickets to the India of the mind? There's a shop sign there. It says greens in letters dripping blood. On sale, I know, are not cabbages or swedes, but the severed heads of the dead. The executioner slices off my head too in his red shirt and udder-like face. It sits at the very bottom of a slippery box under all the other heads. There's a house with three windows on a little street, a gray lawn and a fence of boards. Stop this tram, conductor. Stop it this very instant. You lived and sang here, dear Mashinka. You wove me a rug, me, your fiancé. Where are your voice and body now? Could it be that you are dead? How you moaned in your sitting room whilst I, in my powdered plaits, went off to introduce myself to the Empress, never to set eyes on you again. It's clear to me now, our freedom is a light shining only from that place where people and shadows stand at the entrance to a planetary zoo. Without warning, a familiar sweet breeze and the iron-gloved hand of a horseman and two hooves of his horse fly at me from beyond the bridge. St. Isaac's bastion of orthodox face is etched into the dome of the sky. I will conduct an occasional service for Mashinka and a memorial service for myself. My heart is steeped in eternal gloom. Breathing is hard and life a pain. Mashinka... I never even imagined that I could love and mourn like this.